I have been by Hassan, those fellow may swear that the evidence that I shall give before this committee in respect of the matter before the committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so it will not be passed. The governor is appearing in the Senate as a result of a summons. We must first deal with that before we go to the tabling of uh, management uh, responses and supporting alexas. The governor of Isiolo has been compelled to appear before the Senate by way of summons. That is a power that is granted to the Senate and its committees by the Constitution. The, the summons arose as a result of a fruitless visit that the Senate uh, paid to Isiolo County where the Senate was supposed to prosecute the agenda that it is prosecuting today. To put all this in context, I will request the clerk of the committee just to take us through the chronology of events leading to the ill-fated uh, Isiolo visit and leading to today's meeting so that we understand uh, what has been going on and then uh, we will have to um, have some conversation as a committee and hear from the governor before we give directions on how to proceed. This committee has invited the governor of Isiolo five times and each occasion the governor has found a reason not to appear before this committee and it is for that reason that we issued summons to compel the appearance of Governor Guyo before the Senate. Now, members, this is unprecedented. I don't think there is a, a county which has defied or which has uh, uh, generated results for an appearance uh, more than is your. The narration that the clerk has read begins on the 22nd of February 2023. We are now in the end of April 2024. So for one full year, it has been a back and forth with Siolo County. Members, we have deliberated on the concept of content of parliament and what repercussions should befall those who seem to take a contentious view of parliament and its committees. It is for that reason that the House recently gave stronger uh, effect to the Powers and Privileges Act, so that those who uh, undertake activities that appear to be contentious of Parliament uh, can feel the pain through enhanced fines. And I think there's a conversation that is going on where we need to frame the offences because contempt of Parliament is an offence under the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act. We did the summons and it would appear that that is the reason why the governor is here. But while we were in Isiolo, we also deliberated on the issue of fines that is provided for under the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act. And the Act says, where a person summoned does not appear, or where a person summoned does not satisfy the committee uh, as to the cause of their non-appearance, the committee might impose such a fine, and, and, and the fines are uh, clearly spelled out in the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act. We consulted the legal department, and they have advised that in as much as we have the power to issue fines, and the fines should be a deterrent, the fines should also go to us and write in some of the expenses that the committee has incurred to come to Siona and then not find the government. Before we get there, we must first allow the government to explain why it was not present when the committee had communicated in very good time that we would be visiting this year. So I think at this point, I'm going to give the government an opportunity to explain why for five invitations, he has not found it fit 
and we have all seen it as a priority to honor the invitation of the Senate. Secondly, Governor, you must explain to the Senate why on the 8th of March 2024, when the committee visited Isiono for purposes of considering these reports and doing the inspection of projects, you chose not to be present, and it was not only the governor, the entire county executive was absent, with the exception of the CC for Health, whom we stumbled upon when we went to visit the Mochai. And thirdly, in litigation, explain why this committee should not impose the maximum fine that is provided for in the parliamentary powers of the previous act. Governor, deal with those three issues. Yeah, man. First, I want to thank this committee for their magnanimity uh, of assenting to many of my requests, which I requested the Senate Committee to receive me uh, the invite to the Senate. Chair, on 8th, when the committee was uh, visiting in Seattle, Chair, I was outside in Seattle. I asked for the committee to schedule the meeting, but uh, when the decline came, I was already out of this uh, world here, and I could have not met into the meeting with the state of the own county. And also, my county executive, by Mombasa, said for a few individuals, including the deputy governor who was uh, on the site, he tried to join the Senate, but uh, unfortunately, he wasn't given uh, the list of the call centers who were already angry with me. Uh, Chair, as you know, I was a legislator before. I was an MCA in Nairobi for 10 years, as my good friend Senator Sibuna has said. I have tremendous respect for the Senate as an institution. I know I'm accountable to the Senate. All the institutions which are, which are mandated by the Constitution, including the COP, the Auditor General, the investigative arms of the government, the ESC, and this year, I know I'm accountable to all of them. The Senator, as an MCA, I was a minority leader like them and also as a majority leader. I know the importance of this house, and I cannot be contemptuous to this house senator. I want to take this chance, Chairman, to apologize for, me, for the mistake <laughs> which made Senator to be angry with me. And with that, Senator, I will not miss any invite uh, from the Senate. Uh, Senator Jaka asked if I was protecting anyone. Said I'm not protecting anyone. I know the review, the review which is uh, being reviewed by the Senate here is the year 2019 2020. But you know, the government is perpetual, and as a governor, I'm an answer, answer to the people. Thank you, Chair. I'm not properly seized of the context okay. and the content of uh, those allegations, but uh, Senator Spruna, you are talking about disparaging comments. Uh, which then would, see, would seem to be very much at odd with this apologetic demeanor today. Yes, it's, right. it's as if that was Buyo and this, this is uh, Abdi, yes. Abdi Ibra in person. Yes. Are you, are you three personalities? Because you have said you have even called Bayone. So, did you make those utterances as Buyo or as Governor Abdi Hassan Ibra? Chair, the other answers were unfortunate, and that's the reason why I for yourself. And humbly apologize to this committee, and I can assure you going forward, I'll work very closely with the SIPA committee and the Senate of Lunch. Thank you, sir. The delegation that came this year was not just the Senate. We had the Treasury, we had the OAG, we had uh, representatives from public works, from Ministry of Health, COB. It was a huge delegation. And I think uh, that is not an expense that uh, should uh, uh, go unaddressed. But before we get to that, uh, let me ask the Senator of Mr. Hall if she has something to say. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I welcome the team from Mr. Uh, I want to make a way to hear from the government and his team. Uh, I'm concerned that is affecting my position as Senator for uh, I know very well the role of the Senators is to carry out oversight. But I'm facing a lot of challenge as a Senator for 
And that is why those name callings, more specifically, was coming to me. And I want to ask uh, the governor, before this committee, whether my role as a senator for Israel is causing challenge to his work. That is number one, because he has said in public that I'm undermining, undermining his operation as a government. Number two, there is a lot of name calling against me that I should not carry out oversight. Yeah. And this is why I am actually elected as Senator for Israel. So I want you to tell this committee, or rather to tell this your county, I'm sure this is right, that I have a right to carry out oversight in Isiolo. I have authority to ask questions to any officer within his executive. I have a right to ask a question or any document or any evidence at the assembly. And thank you. We have seen unnecessary hostility towards Senator when they are doing the jobs. And uh, this is a concern not just for the Senator of Sion, but for all of us. Uh, I have personally, uh, sometimes, Governor, I go to county health facilities to see if there are drugs there. And you find uh, people have organized uh, women to sing out there songs disparaging to the Senator. Uh, what you need to do, especially for Senator Dulu, uh, is to assure her that you don't have a problem with the job that she does. And you see, these things might be taken very lightly, but uh, in fact, Senator Dulu has privately shared that uh, she is actually afraid for her life because of uh, the job that she does. Governor, as a leader in CEO, as a leader in this country, it is your responsibility not to exacerbate uh, the feelings of your supporters who might not understand the role of the Senate. You have been a legislator yourself. You used to oversight uh, government so very well yet. I don't remember him organizing wounds, uh, although he was, uh, <laughs> I don't know what, how to do it. He, he never organized wounds against you or on the wheel to, to stop you from doing the work. So I think the assurance, uh, we like the tone that you have begun with. Uh, the assurance that we want, and uh, Senator Dulo has invited you to take advantage of uh, the national media, the people who are watching from Sion, to guarantee that you don't have a problem with Senator doing his job or Senator Fatuma Dulo doing her job. In fact, we should be facilitating the Senate to be able to know the programs in your county. She is supposed to be the biggest ambassador for Sion. I don't understand, Chair, why governors don't understand that we are actually their biggest uh, ambassadors in Nairobi. I should be able to stand and say, my governor is doing this like this morning. Uh, the governor of Nairobi has taken time to sit all of us as members of parliament in Nairobi to explain to us the disaster response his government has put in place so that I can also explain to the people, yes, he has done this, he has done that, these are the shortfalls. Why is there... Why doesn't that relationship exist in Seoul? Why should the Senator Duro feel like she's an enemy if uh, she's doing her job? So please address those concerns. I want, and I pray that we all really want you to be candid with us. It helps because our job is not to fight you, because then we are fighting the revolution. But you see, when I am not holding you to account, and your senator has come up and said the governor is actually not even allowing me to raise the issues which I feel are important. So the question I'm raising is why I am, have you disagreed without being personal? I, I really mean professionally. And number two, and it's not just you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to this complete confession. Many of the governors don't want to work either with the senators who've been elected with them, or even the women friends, or even the members of parliament. And yet for us, we feel like when we are all together as a team, that is how you end up helping your people, and there's less noise, and that can... I want you to explain that to me, sir. Thank you. 
Chea, hay respeto de la Occidente Hatuma, a la Occidente Policiolo, hay no a Constitución de Mendez, hay no a Tintintéis, hay respeto y no continuo de respeto. Eh, and we will act with, together closely going forward. Thank you, Chair. I think that condensed everything in, 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 a, in a very brief uh, answer. Thank you, Chair. We took that oath. You swore to protect and defend the Constitution. So we cannot come out of this meeting looking like we are pleading with the Governor of Uisiolo to do the right thing. We cannot plead with you. We must direct you. And I've seen you have come with your county attorney and other people. And I want when you go back. Uh, you reflect on certain constitutional provisions uh, so that it does not appear like to have be We are not. We are directing you because that is what you swore to defend. And you must reflect, starting from Article 10, on national values and principles of governance. That talks about good governance, transparency, and accountability. And that is why this committee was established. You must reflect on the constitutional provision on the role of Senate. That is the oversight role that Senator Nuno plays. You must um, reflect on Article 73, on leadership and integrity, which says that authority assigned to a state officer vests in the state officer the responsibility to serve the people rather than to rule them. You are not the ruler of Isiolo. You are the governor of Isiolo, bound by the constitution of Kenya. You must reflect on Article 174 on the objects of devolution. Devolution was not to create small empires in uh, 47 counties. Devolution was supposed to bring services closer to people. And finally, you must also reflect on the principles of public finance, prudence, and responsibility. The Senate is not asking you to do anything extra constitutional. The Senate shall never beg you to do the right thing. The Senate expects you to do the right thing. And if you've got a, a good fa familiarity with the Constitution, you will realize that the things that your Senator has been doing in terms of oversight, in terms of calling for documents, calling for records, are fully supported by the Constitution of Kenya. So let it go on record uh, that the Senate did not plead with the Governor, but the Senate directed the Governor to follow the Constitution that he swore to defend. Nobody is more fluent in these matters more than Senator Omtata. Senator Omtata. So I would pray that you formally withdraw all that you say, to set the record straight, and then uh, apologize to us, and undertake never to repeat it, so that you can then proceed on a clean slate. What has happened at Landers for the Punishment, I still think that you have to deliberate on that and come to an agreement how we proceed with the punishment. But uh, I was commanded to be this journal and I looked confused and lost and could not understand why. With all the challenges continuing and as and as uh, Senator Nyonga pointed out, the period under the view was not your period, it was somebody else. And we, one of the things you should understand is that if you don't appear, then the work of the Auditor General Dark is stuck. Because the Auditor General, out of that audit, we are supposed then to validate either to accept the report or reject it. And when we accept the report, then other law enforcement agencies can move in where there is a reason to suspect a crime. So I request that to clean the slate, you formally apologize. If you formally withdraw those comments on whatever media you made them, and then apologize for misleading first the people of the Shono in terms of their role, and number two, for insulting the Senate. That's what I would request. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity and withdraw all the statements uh, which I said in, 
the procedure is your apologies and we can you start from there. Oh, okay. Thank you, Senator. Let me apologize. Make sure the mic is on. Thank you, Chair. Let me apologize and withdraw all statements pertaining to the insult to the Senate at the institution. I, and I, I also want to say, Chair, I was elected in this city at, uh, for three times. I know I'm supposed to be a servant, not a ruler, as you are said. And I will take directive from the state. Thanks, Chair. We then must agree. Um, that there, I'm just looking at the parliamentary report and doing this act. There are things that uh, members uh, want us to encourage that we don't just drop here in this meeting. There is uh, a recourse when someone makes contemptuous or um, uh, belittling uh, comments about the Senate and its work. There are other avenues for seeking redress and making sure that that person. Uh, is held to account. It is not just a clone and technology. So that option is still open, but um, I think that apology and clone will go on record. Where a witness sound does not appear, or appears but fails to satisfy the relevant house of parliament or committee, the relevant house or committee will impose upon the witness such fine, not exceeding 500,000 shillings having regard to the witness condition in life and all the circumstances of the case. And a person may pay the fine <coughs> under subsection 1 to the clerk of the relevant house and parliament or its committee may order the arrest of a person who fails to honor a summons. So there are two things we are giving you here. The summons were issued. The governor has appeared. We have asked the governor to explain the circumstances uh, behind the five missed meetings, and particularly the visit, the, the visit by the committee to Siono, he has been apologetic. I think he has chosen the easier road of apologizing and uh, withdrawing. But he has not really given us an insight on the challenges that have led to um, na appearance before this committee for an entire calendar year. Uh, members, we must make a decision whether the explanation or uh, even the <coughs> appeal for clemency uh, by the governor is sufficient to underwrite the losses, financial, and the damage reputational that this committee and the Senate has suffered in the hands of Governor Kuhn. And I want to put the question that uh, this committee um, uh, should not be seen to be weak and scared to make the decisions that Senator Sefuna was calling upon the Speaker to make last week. We seem to be scared to impose uh, and pronounce ourselves when cabinet secretaries defy invitations to Parliament. Uh, we seek to be too soft and too good. And as a result, people are taking parliamentary business as optional rather than as part of their core constitutional mandate. And I want to put to the members that um, we consider the imposition of that fine uh, to underwrite the fiscal losses and reputational damage that this committee has suffered. We have two, we have two points. One is uh, attendance and the other one is utterance. Uh, apologize on the utterance. What we are discussing is attendance to the committee, appearing to the committee. Because uh, when the clerk came through all those unattendance, to me, we are sitting, we have to pay the, the 500. Why I'm saying this, uh, Senator Spuna also uh, coming on that. On Friday, is it on Friday? Yes. We have a meeting with a joint and both house to discuss on the issue of strike. The key stakeholders are the COG, the governors, and they are not appeared. I'm not saying directly to the, I'm not uh, accusing the CEO 
but the key county issues who are supposed to answer everything is supposed to be the governor. So if the governor does not take priorities of what to handle, I don't think uh, to where I'm sitting, out of 47 counties, maybe we can even vote off the devolution. Yeah. Because in, in, in each offices, we're supposed to answer, you must be answerable to each, to the Senate on counties issue. So to me, let's differentiate between the utterance and attendance. So I accept and I am with the governor to pay the 500 counties. Just the way my Secretary General has said, that when he was in charge yesterday, unless governor you are faking it, then I think it's an honor to apologize the way you did. I would have wished that you actually apologize also, and I think you did it also to Madame Bulo. The only issue that we have that is outstanding, and I think that is what is most probably making Madame Bruno uncomfortable and a few of us, is that we have already set up precedent legally. What do we do with the governor who has refused to attend these committee meetings once, twice, three times, and up to seven times? What do we do? And in that case, I would want to support Madame Miriam that the fine of 500,000. And allow me to say this, I don't know what happens to you people in Nairobi, even Sakaja is having the same thing. In years we find, I don't know, seven times. So I would, I would say that because we have the president and we have the history, I would then mention it to the chair that I have absolutely no problem if you pay that fine. Not because of any reason, but of the fact that you understand the weightiness and the relevance of what you do. Because you see, our job is to make sure we facilitate the revolution for you as governors. If you don't come for our meeting, and our relationship should never be adversarial. We should never fight. That is the most painful thing with all of these committee members. We are caught in between. Do we fight? Then we as senators look like we want to be governors, and yet many of us don't want to be governors. We just want to do our job, make sure you perform. You see, if Isiolo performs, you succeed and Madam Bruno succeeds. When we were on the ground, we actually um, uh, <clears throat> agreed or resolved as a committee that we are going to summon him and we, also, we have also charged him. That was delayed, if I'm not wrong, by the legal department of the Senate because they said the fine will come when he appears. So for me, the fine still stands. If we really feel that uh, uh, the reasoning he has given is not convincing. So personally, I, I want to say that this committee has already made a resolution to find the governor in his own. Thank you. I want the people of Kenya to know who is standing for the constitution, with the constitution, for accountability, with transparency, and standing with the people of Isiolo. What I did was to put a question. I did not say that that is my decision. I put the question. I have listened to members. The majority of the members feel that that content cannot be purged by a simple apology. And that is why we have those provisions in the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act. I just want to encourage members, I have heard you, and the views of the majority, even if you don't count the chair, points toward purging that content through the way of a fine. Even in high school, if you are caught smoking, the way Senator Sifuna was always being caught, then you say that now you have apologized, you'll be taken back to class. It does not work like that. Viboko utapero, suspension, pia utapero. The apology was not about the non-appearance in Isiolo. The apology was for the comments that were made out there. 
to patch the non-appearance in Siono, what the governor must then demonstrate is, I traveled, this is my travel documents, this is my passport, this is the invitation to the meetings that I've gone for. There has to be something before us. There is absolutely nothing. What the governor said is that he apologizes, going by the majority views of the committee, because the act says the committee may, not the chair may, the committee may impose such a fine. I will go with the majority views of the committee that the committee imposes a fine on governor will to purge that content up to the maximum of 500,000. Fortunately, he has come before it has been enhanced to 2 million. And I think that then is the resolution of the committee that from the conversation we have had. The minority have had their say, the majority have had their way. Clark, you will proceed to communicate that formally and give the governor uh, the requisite time frame for settlement of that file.